Hello and welcome to the Yellowbird Acres English Saddle Tree Tutorial along with me, Lane Lovestone. Uh, today I'll be doing a bunch of different uh, English saddle trees uh, so you can take a look, see how I do it and then you can adapt it for your own or do it exactly the same way as me. Uh, but either way I want to share my knowledge, share what I've uh, learned through making English saddles and help you everyone else um, learn how to do the art as well. I love seeing all the different uh, saddles that come out of the model horse world and just want to encourage everyone to get into tack making. It's a lot of fun. So today we'll be doing two English jumping saddle, saddle trees. Um, we're doing a special one uh, that I've been working on for a little while. It's the Tonino Lamborghini Grand Prix saddle. It's a jumping saddle. This is uh, in real life. It's a handmade saddle, so I thought it would be cool to do a model horse handmade one. And then we have the Portuguese saddle. So it's a little bit different style that I'm used to and something new. Um, but we're going to do the tree exactly the same way as the English saddle so you can see how we can alter this pattern um, to fit different styles. So uh, as you can see I've, I've already drawn out my patterns, I've got all my saddle tree um, little uh, pattern pieces here all ready to go. and. Our first thing to do is to grab a pop can. Okay, so I have my pop can here. As you can see, this one's been used quite a bit already, um, but you get the idea. So, um, my soda can here, I'll uh, get, um, get a marker here. Your best bet to use is a Sharpie marker. A black sharpie but I don't have one available to me so I'm just using a different black marker. Uh, what I like to do when I'm drawing out these patterns is hold it horizontally to the can like so. Um, it's just a little bit easier to cut when it comes time. And what I'll do is just find a good spot and I'll just hold it down with my thumb as I'm outlining the pattern piece. So this doesn't have to be exact. I do give like a bit of an approximation on on how the pattern is. I don't need to be too exact on this. I like to have a little bit of differences between each saddle so um, of course, if you wanted to get more of an exact pattern copy on your soda pop can, you can tape it down or glue it down even. I generally don't like to glue pattern pieces down because I like to save them for later. But if you wanted it to be more exact, you can have a special pattern piece just for gluing down on your can. This pattern piece will change a bit as I cut it out. It does have a bit of wings on the end of them, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it. So, there you are. I have traced out my pattern piece. Now I'm ready to draw the rest of the pattern pieces down and cut them out. So we'll, I'll come back as soon as everything's cut, um, drawn out and cut out there. back so we have the one jumping saddle kind of one of the Tonino Lamborghini and then the Portuguese so I just have one left to cut out and I will show you exactly how that looks so you can do it at home so as I told you this one used to have um, a little bit of like an extra padding on the side I'm gonna get rid of that for you this particular saddle. So I'm just going to eyeball it and then cut it how I would like it to look. This is an important part here. So this is where the stirrup leather will go. 
So I'm going to cut out a little tab right here so that we have some space for some leathers. Now some people will leave this part off and they'll just use this part. And what they'll do is do a jump ring where the stirrup leather goes. Finished product of this looks more realistic. As real English saddles will have a little clip, sort of like a, like a metal clip that holds that in. Again, just be careful when you are cutting these because that soda pop can can get a little bit sharp. So from this side, my ink is fading a little bit, but you can kind of see here. I'll draw it up again. It goes like this. So that's the important part right here. So I want to make sure this is wide enough that I'm going to be able to uh, have a sturdy stirrup leather holder that will withstand adjusting. So go in like that. Cut it on this side. And then the flat piece on the inside. That's the technique I've found to work the best. And then from here I can just cut that part off. So we're actually going to be folding this piece of, of soda can in. And again, going straight around that one. And there we are. So that is our second jumping saddle right there. Okay. Also be careful when you're cleaning these up. They can be kind of sharp. Do a little excess trimmings. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we get from this flat piece of metal into a functioning saddle tree. So what I like to do first, you can wear gloves for this, because of course these parts are going to be a bit sharp. What I'm just doing is um, pressing down the poking out edges of the soda pop can so that they don't hurt my fingers when I'm doing it. I'm gonna take my finger right here and I'm gonna press in and do like a bit of a crease to get the front edge of that, the uh, saddle tree here. So I'm just gonna curve it down. All the front of them are curved downwards like that. Now that I have that edge, I'm going to kind of bring it back because I want like a domed shape and I want it domed all the way along the sides too so that these sides aren't sticking out. So I'm actually rolling it on my finger downwards and I want it to go all the way down to about here. I want that dome shape to continue all the way back. These are where your legs go, right? So you're, you don't want those to be sh sharp on your legs. So I'm gonna curve it down like that. You can see I've got quite a curve and even the sides are curved down like this. I'll make sure you can see that. I want a whole curve of the fret there. If you can see that. You see how that front part is curved. Okay. So, oops. Stop my thing. Sorry everyone. 
Okay. So we've got a curved, you can see how it lays flat like that. It's curved now at the front. Okay, so now the, the other part that's important is the back part. So this is the part we're gonna focus on and I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna pull it right up like that. You might have some, some experience doing this. It's kind of like when you're um, curling up paper you're just taking it and pulling and curling it up. And I want to make sure that the curve, the dome shape that we had before stays. So I'm going to hold that down and then this will curve. You can see there. And you can kind of flatten them out and sort of bend and twist and try to get the shape you're looking for on these. They will be pliable. So there we are. Now you can kind of see that that's the shape. These will improve as we work with them. I don't want to have like a definite line there. I want it to be like curved, curved. I'm going to double check my, my um, tree to make sure that this part is straight across, which it doesn't really look super straight to me, so I'm just going to like trim a little bit off the top. Some of these English saddles can have different shapes at the back of them. Like some have like a squared off shape, some of them rectangle, and some of them are just round. So it just depends on what kind of saddle you want to make for the time. So, there you go. And I'm just going to keep working them Keep trying to have that shape where it goes front. The front part is domed, and then the back part lifts up like that. Okay. Now we'll take a break. I'll do that to the rest of the trees. We'll be back. Okay, so we have the trees shaped here. They're all shaped ready to go. And then what I did now was I took this thin craft foam stuff. So it's like this craft foam. You can buy it at like any craft store. And uh, what I did is I traced out the patterns for the trees, cut them out, and then I just put a little X mark on each of the trees or on each of the foam pads so I know which side is up and then when I cut them out I don't need to cut out the uh, piece for the stirrup leather here we just did the straight on there because those ones won't be any uh, it won't be functional as the uh, stirrup holder it'll just be um, like padding on the thing. So I've cut all of them out and then what I've done is I've traced out the backs again here. So I like to add like a little bit of lift to them. So I'm just gonna cut those out. The Portuguese saddle I did end up changing a little bit on the pattern of the tree. I ended up thinning out the seat a little bit and then just refining the inside so maybe you can see that sort of just thinned it up made it a little bit smaller and you can see a little bit okay that was just to refine it make it a little bit more usable i just have two more of these to cut out So what I'll do now, I'll take these and I'll just glue them to the back like this, trimming off any excess. That way when we put them on the tree, it will actually give it a little bit of a lift. And once it's glued on, I'll uh, kind of shape this out a little bit more refined so that way you can see it'll be like 
kind of like that. So, yeah, so what we'll do, we'll do that and then come back with you with the results of that. And then uh, I'll show you how we actually get the foam onto the saddle pad and how we make it even look a little fluffier. Okay, so now that I have the foam pieces glued together, I can start shaping it with scissors. So I'm just going to go around the edges and shape it down. These ones have already been done, so you can kind of see how all the edges are rounded and you have a shape to it so that when it goes on the tree it lifts it up slightly. And then you have to work on your um, your keepers for your stirrup leathers here. So I'll just take the edge and bend it down with my pliers and fold it in half so it becomes stronger. If this area is too small, you can use your scissors to cut through, which I'll probably do on this one. And then that same thing on this side. So you have a nice strong stirrup leather keeper. Cut this edge to allow the leather to go through. That way you can switch out stirrup leathers. Now you can do it to the other side. Just fold it in half on that side. And fold it in half on this side. And I can just cut out a little notch here. To allow leather to go through. And then we are ready to start gluing this on, this foam piece onto the tree itself. So I'll glue those down and then we'll proceed in part two of the video.